All right, people, Catfish Dave here. The title of this video is the Ultimate Flathead Challenge. A couple videos ago, y'all seen me have a girl in my video, the one with the legs. She drove almost four hours to come fish with me. We got on some good blue cats in that video. The next weekend rolled around. It was a spur of the moment thing. She decided to come down again. Now I could have made it easy and we could have went right back and chased them old blue cats. But I'm a guy, I kind of like a challenge. And uh, my fishing style had changed a little bit getting the boat. Normally I fish hard for blues up to about mid-April and then I'll kind of target flatheads. Well this year I didn't do that, I was busy dragging baits. I had gotten some flatheads on video and targeted flatheads, but I hadn't really put the time in for a big fish doing short trips, couple hour weeknight trips in uh, downtown Knoxville. And I was getting some flatheads, but not no really big flatheads. I was due for a really big flathead coming over the side of my boat. This girl was coming down and I knew she had it in her to do the time that it took to wait out one of these flatheads. I made a video last spring called The Right Place at the Right Time where I sat on a spot for two days for a big flathead. We talked about it, she agreed, we would do the much harder time anchored down over a prime spot for the elusive big flathead. One thing I wanted her to do was have the ultimate Tennessee River experience. I wanted her to catch her own skipjack. She didn't have skipjack where she lived and here on the Tennessee River that's what we do, we chase these skipjack, man that's our main bait here. So I chose an area where we could not only catch skipjack but that had several real good flathead possibility locations on it. We started out the day and she got her first skipjack in no time. Her very first hookup, she pulled in two at a time. Yeah, yank him up, yank, get him over the center, get him over the center, get him over the center. First skip check, Oh my god, dude, a There you go, there you go. Keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. That dragging said it. Woo! The skipjack bite is kind of inactive right now. There's one. I'm trying to keep a little on this boat because uh, one came off. Catching these skipjack, just a series of different color crappie flies, and I always run a heavy one at the bottom to keep everything straight. And also I run a heavy one because sometimes they prefer a bigger fly. On that one, it, it's running a little bit deeper because it's got a heavy spoon on the back of it. Same scenario though. Guys, we're saying something last video about she wouldn't bait her own hook and all this stuff. Well, we fixed that problem this video, she baited her own hook. She'd never hooked skipjack before, so I just kinda coached her a little bit how I did it. 
I wouldn't have been on the boat, I'm sure she would have figured it out. Either way, she was like a sponge. She wanted to hear what I had to say, and she hooked her own skipjack the very first day. Pretty good. I always pull the scale off the tip of it. For anybody that likes the colors of these Lady Big Cat Fever rods with the black and the pink or purple or whatever it is, Big Fish Outfitters Lenore City's got a pile of these in stock right now. Now she was down here and I wanted her to reel in this flathead. She told me she wanted me to fish too. I said, okay. Wasn't long. Both rods starting getting bites at the same time. I'm going to reel down here. Go ahead, go ahead. Grab yours, I'll grab mine. She caught a big blue last time down here, so we're trying to fish areas that are more flathead prone, and uh, it just got on my rod. She was getting a bite at the same time, and she reeled it in, worried about tangling up mine. I told her she could have left it out there, but either way, we have pulled a flathead out of this spot out here in the heat of the day. I wanted her to keep her bait out there in case that fish came back, but uh, her being courteous, she just reeled hers out of the way thinking it was in the way of my fish. Either way, we had one flathead in the boat. Only problem is, this is kind of counterproductive. It was on my rod. Now what are the odds that we can come up with another flathead and get it on her rod? Now it's becoming even more of an ultimate challenge. Sun started coming up, started getting hot. We decided we would take a break, go back to the ramp, have a pizza delivered to the ramp, and hit spot number two. We arrived at spot number two. Been on the water now for about four hours, and she was being a trooper. Well, we here at potential flathead spot number two, and the bite sucks. I'm not gonna get real excited about it till we get around dark. We did get a flathead in the boat so far, but I'm trying to get one on her rod. I can tell you that all the skipjack I have cut up this weekend, they don't have eggs in them anymore. And they're getting harder to get also, so it's definitely that time of year. Won't be long and the fish will disappear for a while and we'll be into the crappy part of summer. 
As it got closer to dark, started to cool down, we put some warmer clothes on. These old flatheads can be elusive. You can show up in their neighborhood, but that don't mean they're going to show up on your line. This spot was the same exact spot in my video, right place at right time. I had had that spot in mind the whole time we were sitting out there down river earlier in that day. I knew about the time it would happen. I knew which side of the boat it would hit on. Just watch the other video because it's an exact replica of what happened one year ago at the same place at the same time. Now one thing that was going down was we was running out of time. In a, in a way, it was a sense of despair for me because there was only about an hour left in the day. But in the same way, as the despair grew, so did the excitement. Because I knew that last year, at this exact spot, at the same hour of the day, that's when it happened. We're getting close to that dark hour. I knew as we were running out of time, we also had an even better chance of getting that big flathead on the line. Sure enough, like clockwork, it happened. You're getting a bite, you're getting a fish, you're getting a fish. Go, 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 pull it out of her. Pull it out of her, pull it out of her. Don't force it, just hold, keep a bend in the rod, just keep a bend in the rod. He's rip and drag, ain't he? That's a big flathead. Just hold him, just keep it tight. You got a big flathead on there. Now you're gonna hear me coaching her, reeling this fish, and I probably didn't need to. The girl had plenty of experience reeling in fish, but everything was on the line with this big flathead. She was down there fishing with me, and everybody was expecting something. My name's on the line here. Both of our time is on the line here. Four hours one way driving, that's eight hours round trip. Another eight hours invested during the heat of the day in that hot aluminum boat. The fact that spawn is getting close, and not only was I running out of time to put a big flathead in my boat, but she was running out of time to get a big flathead too. This fish was for both of us. There was a whole lot riding on this big flathead. You can hear me saying not to force this fish because when this fish hit, it just started ripping the drag. Now I've had, I don't know how many flatheads I pulled in that were barely whisker hooked. And I'm thinking, man, if this fish pulled that hard and he's barely hooked, he ain't got much pulling left to do. He's going to be off the hook. So I was mainly worried about a hook pulling loose. I believe she's got her big flathead on. Keep that rod bent, but don't just over force it. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Step up on the deck. Keep it bent, keep it bent. If he comes in at all, you, uh, you crank that on him. Get these lines out of the way. Yeah, keep a good bend in. Start reeling. Don't let any slack. Don't overforce it. Get a sip of bow, he's probably gonna feel heavy. He'll probably just sit there and linger under the boat for a while. Just keep a good man in the rod. I'm never here. I'm never here. Get the net ready. Just keep a good man in the rod. Thank you. 
Stop the line. I know this is a big flathead. These flatheads will wear you out. I seen that fish rise to the top of the water. There was a huge sense of relief. Gosh, thank you. Look how big he is. Yeah, here, you pick the rod up so I can get him in the neck. Oh my god. I don't have time to get a good picture of this fish. You are so awesome. Thank you. I told you he was in the right spot. It's gonna be, he's heavy. Oh, God! Oh, God! Look how big he is! Yeah! It's heavy fish. Yay! Oh, sorry. That's a, she's gonna have a hard time holding this one up. I'm gonna just hold it up for the camera. This is a heavy fish. He's very, very, very heavy, man. Oh. I'm gonna hold it up for her and we'll try to get a picture of it. It's a big fish. Yeah, he's a big fish. Look up, look up, look up. I want his tail to come out a little bit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Big old fish right there. Yes, sir. Woo! We took the challenge of going after a big flathead that day, and in one day, we got that trophy fish. She got her trophy catch. I got me a trophy over the side of my boat on my video. We worked together as a team to make both of our dreams come true. She was a trooper. 
She had fishing in her heart, and it made this whole video thing with her easy from the start. Probably the most enjoyable videos I've ever made. I was actually happier seeing her get that fish than if I would have caught that fish myself. We had some fun. We got her done. We caught the elusive flathead. Woo! We both got one today, so. That's a high five on that one. That's a high five. Thank you, sir. <laughs> this is a video. There was fish in the video. That makes it a fishing video. This is Catfish Dave. Signing out.